have, uh, if, uh, so let's say you have a graph with say a million nodes. Like for example, say, you know, let's say uh, you know, your Twitter. Right? I, don't, I don't know how many people have joined Twitter, but I'm sure it's more than a million. How many people have joined uh, Twitter? Maybe 50 million, I don't know. Yeah, in 2009 it was about a million, and then it, when uh, Obama joined and Oprah did, it just went straight up. Right. Is it over 100 million? Or? Um, I think they, last time they went public, they said that 80 million. Okay, so we've got you enough know, data points. It's, right. pu it's pushing 100 million. Right. It's graph you know, pattern matching. So, yeah. so you've got these giant graphs, right? Yeah. And so a lot of what you want to do on those graphs is you want to find patterns in those graphs, right? So you want to find, uh, you know, for example, uh, you, know, you want to find, and give me an instance of, like, so tell me, you know, who is connected to both you know, Barack Obama and also Lady Gaga, right? So you want to set, create a list of people who have connections to both or, or, or who has been retweeted by both those people. That'd be an interesting query to ask. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, um, so in order to sort of issue that, so that type of query it turns out to be sort of a subgraph pattern matching query where you have a graph um, of you know, who's retweeting whom or who's connected to whom, uh, and you want to sort of find some, some, some part of that graph in the larger context of a much larger graph. So it turns out that uh, you can do it pretty easily on a single node, but when your graph is split across you know, hundreds of nodes or you know, even thousands of nodes, like, like for example, Facebook or Twitter, um, you know, then, uh, then it becomes much more complex. And so, uh, so you know, um, you know, we had some research trying to solve that problem. That, you know. uh, that's very interesting. Uh, now talk a little bit more about uh, your role as a, a, a data scientist, chief scientist. Um, I said data scientist before, but chief scientist. Chief scientist, at, uh, that's right. Adapt, so <laughs> different than data scientist. Yes, and, yeah, uh, no, I, I, yeah. Although you're dealing with data, so it's true. It's, it's true. It's, I mean, we, we, there. we are a data company, and we build a product for data scientists. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. but yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, so essentially, what we, what what what, uh, what happened was, so you know, the Hadoop DB project at, at Yale was sort of, you know, we were working on it right when Hadoop was sort of getting started, uh, uh, at least you know, starting to get a little bit more popular. Um, so by 2008, well, actually, really early 2009. Um, we published a paper that, that got a lot of traction um, in the industry. Um, so we sort of showed how to combine uh, Hadoop, which obviously you know, by 2009 was really taking off, with database systems. Right? So Hadoop is, is well known to be very good for unstructured data and, and for sort of, um, you know, for um, you know, multi-structured data, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, but you know, on the other hand, it's also known for being not so great for relational data. Right? If you have relational data in Hadoop, you can do it. You can query it with Hive and it works. But it's not so optimized for that, and it's actually uh, sort of received a lot of criticism for not being optimized for that. Um, so you know, today, what a lot of people do is they have they have uh, Hadoop uh, and a database system sitting side by side, and they have these connectors between them that sort of ship data back and forth between Hadoop and, and the database system. Uh, so you know, I, I think that's nice. I think that you know solves certain problems, but I don't think it's a good long-term solution. It's really you know having two systems, both of them are, are you know parallel systems that sort of do, do scalable data processing. You know, it's just not. It's it's sort of um, why have two when you can have one. So, that, so the goal of the Hadoop DB project was to uh, was to try and create one system to so make Hadoop, you know, fix its problems for structured data, so that th therefore it can uh, it, it can be you know as good as databases for structured data. Um, so that we published a paper about that in 2009. Uh, and we uh, um, and you know and, and it got a lot of traction. So you know eventually venture capitalists started sort of coming to us saying you should really commercialize the technology. And uh, you know it wasn't uh, you know although I definitely did want to start a company at some point in my career um, after seeing Stonebrook all those times. But um, it was still a little bit early for me to do it. I was sort of I wasn't really expecting to start a company so soon. But uh, but given sort of how much excitement there was in the industry and you know and, and the pressure from VCs, you know we, we uh, I, I took the the, the jump. <laughs> we started a company uh, you know right right at sort of towards the end of 2000. Uh, Actually, in the middle of 2010, I think it was, we actually officially started it. Um, Which VCs uh, went into that one? So the, the early round VCs were sort of uh, local boutique VCs in uh, New Haven. So a, a, a VC called Launch Capital. Um, and also the, uh, the VC, uh, for, uh, sort of the, the, state, the state of Connecticut has a VC firm uh, called Connecticut Innovations. And they also were, um, were in on that first round. Um, uh, of course, now I'm sure you know, um, you know uh, a, couple, a couple of months ago, we raised a bunch more money, uh, at $8 million from Bessemer and Norwest, which are actually How much? Uh, $8 million, Well, actually, so $9.5. Um, it's, it's what complicated. But the official filing was $9.5 million, but the Bessemer and Norwest themselves put $8 million in, into the company. Um, so, uh, Who's uh, the partner from Norwest? Uh, Matt Howard. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't, I'm not sure if he's a partner, but he's you know he's the guy who's working with us. I'm not sure um, you know what exactly the status is there. And, and at Bessemer, it's Felder Hardiman, um, who is who also Felder Hardiman, okay, who was the guy behind Vertica. So um, so obviously I had some comfort level there uh, from you know from the Vertica days. Um, so yeah. So anyway, so uh, so so over time we managed to raise a bunch of money, and, and, and so now you know and it's now the goal is to you know, actually uh, build a product that has an impact in the industry. Um, so that's uh, so that's sort of the history there. So my role, I think your question was what's my role there. 
Um, so, uh, so my role as chief scientist is to really sort of, you know, the most important thing is to help with the tech transfer. Right? So to bring the, the idea from the lab, we have, you've, you filed three patents, and about to file a fourth patent um, that came out of my lab at, at Yale with Avi Silberschatz and all my students at Yale, trying to sort of, you know, move that over the, to the company to make sure that... that, that uh, does Yale get a piece of the action? Yale does. Yale owns a poly company, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they own, they own the patents. But to any work that I do at Yale, um, uh, the, the patents that are filed are owned by Yale. Uh, so, so yeah, definitely, uh, definitely get a piece of the action there. Um, so anyway, but yeah, so, uh, so, so first thing I do is, is tech transfer, um, and also sort of, you know, I participate in develop meetings and sort of help, uh, you know, help with some high level design points in the, in the product as well. Um, you know, and, and, uh, you know, at natural as a founder, you also have various business stuff you have to, you have to do as well. I wouldn't say that's chief scientist stuff, but it's still random stuff that you got to do when you start companies. How do you like that? Is that, uh, is it a welcome change or is <laughs> it like, yeah, I don't really want to do this, but I have to. Cause I'm I mean, it's a... Uh, it's, I'm definitely learning a lot. You know, I mean, a lot of this is new to me. Uh, I mean, I, I learned a little bit from Vertica. I, I got to see, uh, especially the early days of Vertica, I got to see how it was done. But, uh, but now I'm actually doing it myself rather than you know seeing other people do it. So, um, you know, so you know, a lot of it's new to me. Uh, but you know, I mean, I, 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 it, for now it's, it's fun. You know, I, I find I, I find that because it's new, I'm learning a lot. Like it's it's still like it's intellectually challenging. Uh, you know, I, we'll see. You know, if it still stays interesting to me over the long fast. term. <laughs> but yeah, but for now it's uh, it, you know for now I'm having a good time. Excellent. All right, Daniel Abadi from Yale and uh, Hadapt. Appreciate you coming on the queue. Great, great insights. Great. Congratulations great on all your success. Fantastic. Love that story. Uh, tech geek, professor, Yale owns the patents, building out companies. Congratulations. Hey, keep on knocking them, man. You got a hot streak going. Cheers. Yeah, yeah keep stepping up to the plate and building the companies. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, cool. All, all right, right. Cheers, guys. Thank nice you very much.